I'm Maylin Dovan, certified athletic therapist and founder of Rehab You Movement and Performance Therapy. I have the pleasure of being with my good friend, uh, Alexi. Uh, Alexi is a kinesiologist, owner of this CrossFit box. <laughs> he's a CrossFit uh, level three certified coach, and he's gonna be my supermodel today. We're gonna talk about uh, butt wink, the famous butt wink, because uh, we get that question all the time. So butt wink, is it bad? So let's, let's, you know, let's first respond to that question. Is it bad? The, the question begs the answer that every question in the fitness industry gets. It depends. So if we're talking about just a squat pattern, which is different from a squat exercise, but if naturally Alexis sits at the bottom of a squat and just relaxes there, he's gonna get butt wink, okay? What is butt wink? Butt wink is just a search for more hip flexion. So when he gets to the end of his actual hip flexion range, how does he get more hip flexion to be able to relax there? His pelvis has to posterior tilt right? Because his femur has run into his pelvis and the pelvis posterior tilts so he can get more hip flexion, right? And you'll notice that this tends to flatten out the low back. And if I ask Alexi to kind of extend his low back or connect with his lumbar extensors to bring his pelvis a little bit more anterior tilt, you'll see that that limits his range, right? So you can come up out of there. <laughs> we, get, we don't get you working isometrically for like five minutes. So is butt wink bad? Well, if you're talking about just a squat, squat pattern, and again, that's very different from a squat exercise, butt wink is normal. It's a normal physiological movement so that you can get more flexion range. Now, obviously you don't wanna be doing that under heavy load when you're doing a squat exercise, but some people go into butt wink at the bottom of their squat. So what's the reason for that? Hey guys, thanks for watching our videos and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you Google butt wink, <laughs> you will get the answer that it's tight hamstrings, right? And granted, if you're really, really, really super tight in your hamstrings, that might limit you in a squat position. But typically, let's say, let's say that Alexi had tightness over here in his hamstrings, which isn't super bad, right? Like, let's say he had a little bit of tightness over here. What do you think will happen if I flex his knee? What happens if I flex your knee? you get more flexion. So if I flex his knee, he's gonna get more flexion. Does this look a little bit like a squat? So really, even if he had a little bit of tightness in his hamstring, it potentially wouldn't really replicate in his squat movement or limit his squat, okay? Unless you notice that you get him into this position, he's already posterior tilted, and then you get more flexion, but he's already posterior tilted. So it's not like, let's not jump to the absolute response that it's tight hamstrings that cause butt wink, okay? If anything, it would probably be more tight glutes. For example, a glute tightness test, a glute length test would be to say, let me get him here in a, in a, in a straight leg raise position. And if I flexed his knee and wasn't able to get more range, that would mean that his, his glutes are tight. Okay, so it could be glute tightness that limits your hip flexion. It could also be hip capsule tightness, okay? Now, regardless what kind of squat you're gonna be doing, whether you're doing a low bar back squat, a high bar back squat, or a front squat, or any variation such as a zerker squat, goblet squat, etc., you're gonna need, at the very least, 110 degrees of hip flexion. So if Alexi doesn't even have 110 degrees of hip flexion he's, and he's got tightness and we can feel that it's his joint capsule, that would certainly limit his squat, okay? So it could be a little bit of hamstrings, it likely could be glutes, it could be hip capsule, it could also be his hip structure, which I, I think I go through in, a, in another capsule on the blog with the hip scour test. And the other thing that it could be is also pel pelvic control. So control of the pelvis in that bottom position, which sometimes you'll see in hypermobile people. So sometimes women tend to be very hypermobile. If they're postpartum, they lose that kind of awareness of control of the pelvis at the bottom of the squat. So those are the types of things you're going to have to work on. So we're gonna go through a few exercises that you could use to address butt wink with a client if it's a problem, okay? So come on out of there and we're gonna go over here. So if you had found that there was um, a restriction in the hip, 
a restriction in hip flexion, you could use an inferior glide with a band to mobilize the hip and increase flexion. So how would you do that? And he's going to set up with the band right at the crease of his hip. Perfect. So that the band, as when he flexes the knee, is pulling that hip inferiorly, and then he can pull that to his end range, and then he can oscillate there, and he's creating that lever, and the band is pulling him, and it's gliding that head of the femur inferiorly, okay, to increase hip flexion. Okay, so there's something that could increase hip flexion if you found that the person had um, a, a flexion restriction, so limited hip flexion. Of course, if you did find soft tissue limitations in the glutes and or hamstrings, you could also work on those in your mobilization sequence. All right? Now, we're gonna get you turn over on all fours. Now, whether or not you did the, 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 the inferior glides with the hips because you had uh, rigidity or were limited in joint in, in hip flexion or you're dealing with someone who's lacking lumbopelvic control this is an exercise you're going to want to do to create that awareness so here we're going to do a pelvic rocking exercise so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get Alexi to get into a neutral pelvis position so he can tilt anterior and posterior until he finds where he feels kind of neutral and of course in a squat you wanna have a bit of an arch in your lumbar spine and maintain that arch. So now we're gonna get him to replicate a squat pattern by rocking the hips back, and we want him to maintain that arch. So that helps him feel what it's like to maintain the arch and not let the pelvis tuck under as he goes into hip flexion. So it's really an awareness exercise. Where's my neutral? And then how do I maintain that awareness of my lumbar extensors that I can create just enough anterior tilt that my pelvis doesn't roll under as I go into hip flexion. So I'm dissociating that movement, okay? So there's an exercise you would wanna use for someone who's either hypermobile, has lost that awareness, or after you mobilize someone who has rigidity. Then you wanna integrate that into a loaded pattern, right? So when you're trying to create that awareness, the best way you can, the best exercise that you can use, the best variation you can use is an exercise that, that helps someone really focus on the pelvis. If I have a barbell and I have to think of my bar path and all that kind of stuff, it becomes more difficult to just focus on my pelvis, right? So whenever you use a variation that has the weight closer to the torso and typically closer to the pelvis, so a shorter lever, that helps people really just be able to focus on the pelvis. So I like to use, for example, a goblet squat because he can hold that weight really close to his torso. So it just becomes like his torso weighs more and then he can really focus on just his hips. So he's gonna squat down and we want him to focus on not having that butt wing. Good, and back up. Now, slow eccentrics. You can see he went right into naturally a really slow and controlled eccentrics, and you could even pause at the bottom, okay? So we could have him increase that pause at the bottom to see how that feels, really create that awareness of staying tight at the bottom and then coming up and out of there. All right? And see one more here. Awesome. Now. If he was still butt winking at that range, we could decrease his range a little bit and say, I want you to stop just short of your bottom range, your usual bottom range, and then progress our way back down to full range. All right? So, mobilization, work on any rigidity, tightness, limitations in range of motion, if there are, you're always gonna wanna have an activation where you're working on that dissociation and having that awareness of not letting the pelvis tuck under as the hips move into flexion and what that feels like as far as how much I connect with the lumbar extensors and then load that in a way that the person can really focus on the movement. So not having to think of bar path, like, a, like with a back squat or a front squat, just really a weight close to the body. So a goblet squat, if you don't have a kettlebell, it could just be a dumbbell, that kind of stuff. Closer the weight is to the torso, shorter the lever arm is, the easier it is to really just focus on my, what's going on at my hips and my pelvis. So there you have it. What's butt wink? Is it bad? How do I uh, address it?